you to be online, you have to fill a form, you want to register for something, you want to apply for work, anything you do, you want to pay money, you want to anything you do, you want to pay money online, you have to input and register and submit some things. So the input elements can be displayed in several ways, depending on the type attribute. Like I told you, anything you do. So if you still go further, you see that all the areas that you can put input is stated there. You can use input for button, input for checkbox, input for color, input for date, input for date time, input for file, input for email. There are so many, so many. But you can actually read this thing up. I don't want to go into theory. You can read them up on my own website, cvn.com slash news. When you click on that website, go to HTML, go to read all my info about HTML, how you can do that theoretically. But here I want to show you practically. And also, if you don't want to go to my website, then you can go to another my main website, which is www.cvn.com. Right there, click on blog. On blog, it also trace you back to my news. After my news, you will get HTML and see all these things yourself. So without much ado, let's go straight to the point and go into the practical. Okay, welcome to Seven. So to start an input tag, as usual, do the same thing we did before. Start with your input. And remember, if you're not using VS Code, then you have to type it by yourself. First of all, type your less than, put input, then the type. The type is normally always, always with text. That's why VS Code will start with text for you. So in input type equals to you put up, show your also show up and put text, okay? So the type is text, want to use text now. And don't forget, under input, okay, let me not go there, so I'll get to take it one by one. Now, just save this and see what will happen. Save. When you click on save, come over to your live server and see what you've done and see if actually everything is okay. Do you see it? Let me make it both so you can see it. You see it? So you can actually type anything here, right? You can type anything here. But you notice something here. How does somebody know that you want to type something here? There's there just a boss for you, a test boss or test you or whatever you call it, just a boss. And that's the I input to create a boss for you to type. But you have to let your users know what they're going to type. Are they typing their email address? Are they typing their password? So how do you do that? Let's go over back to it and let me show you in a jiffy how you can do that. So email after the test, you give a little space, then you add value. That's to call value in input, okay? Value enable users to know what they want to type. So you can put there, enter your first name. Enter your first name. Enter your first name. And as usual, as usual, click on save. Okay, control S for your save. And let's go over it again so that it makes sense. Let me make it both sides what we have. You see it? Enter your first name. So user can now click on it and delete this one first. Close everything here. And then enter his first name. My name is Simonua. So let me enter my first name. Simonua. So I mean the JavaScript. When you enter your first name, you press enter. It will now bring and then enter your second name, your first name, and all that. Okay, that is work of an input. Are you understand? Are you getting it now? I believe you are getting it. So let's move on. You are getting it. You are getting it. You are getting it. So let's go to the next one. Let's now type. Let's make it like a complete email. So I want to recite email address. So let's make it that way. So come over here. This is putting test here. This is putting enter your first name. Let's say enter your email address. Let's make it. So you understand. Enter your email. Enter your email. Okay. Enter your email. Then the next one should be password. So it should be input type. Enter your password. You can actually copy this to make work easy. Input type. The same test. And what are you going to enter? Enter your password. Value. Don't forget to work on value value. Enable you have to see it on the inside the test box. They'll tell you what you want to type in. That's the source of value, okay? Don't forget it because you are still going to another one after value. So get it now. Value, enter your password. Value, enter your password. As usual, let's click on save and again see whether what we've done is has worked. Okay, I believe it has worked. So you see it. The first one will say enter your email. After your email, you need to do next. Enter your password. Now, if you click on it, you scroll it, then you can put in your password. But look at something. You see, normally when you enter password, you're supposed to show no. But this one is showing your password. Why? And I will I want you to explain. I want to explain something so you get that's why I put it there for you to know. 
Now, why did he show your password? Because if you go to Yahoo, if you go to any account, if you enter your password, password will be hidden. The reason is very simple. Because under input, what do we say? We say test. But what are we putting? We are putting password. So it's going to be a protected test. So what do you come? What do you do to remove that? Could you just come over where you put test, delete the test, and put password. And you see what will happen right now. Put it password, save, and let's go right again. Did you notice something? It has changed to password. And this is the HTML way of bringing up password. It won't enter your password. Why is that? You know that it's a password. So you, you, you clean it, clean it up, and then put your password and press enter and it goes. But if you want to see what you type, you can come here just like other side, click on it and it will open it for you to see. I uh, don't make any mistake. Are you getting it? Is it ringing bell? Is it entering? I believe it's entering. Please note one thing. If you are learning coding, you don't just learn coding by watching. Pick up your laptop. Or your phone don't worry my next tutorial i'll teach you how you can use phone to code when you pick up your laptop or your phone you can code with it from there as i'm talking you are learning you watch it first then second time you start practicing what i said little by little little by little you will be entering to your system and before you know it you become a coder you become a programmer okay so we've done enter your password you enter your mail but you notice something each time we say enter your password enter your mail let me let me take you there you see the, look at this. We have to clean it up completely before we now type our own. It's supposed to be like that. Well, when you go to a password, it's there to enter your email. Normally, when you click on it, the thing will wipe off by itself. So something is lacking. Why is that? Oh, why are we trying to click our own first before it shows to enter or not to enter? There is a reason for it. So let us try and see if we can actually find that out right away. Don't forget, I'm taking it step by step so you get all these things. Take it step by step like this too. So remember here we use value. And when we use value, the next thing was enter your power, your email. So that means for this email, for this actual email to be cleaned by itself, we have to use another thing. We we'll call it placeholder. Okay? We we'll call it placeholder. Let me type it for you. We we'll call it placeholder. We'll call it placeholder. Okay? This is it, placeholder. We'll call it placeholder. So you use that to make sure that when you type something, it won't appear there. Again, somebody can easily type in and see. Don't forget what I call it placeholder. So let's practice and see if it will work. Same input, type your input. Don't always forget input first. Then what are we going to put? Username. You can leave it. This is the same to your email. You can type your email, enter your email. Then you now come over here and you type. So putting value, what do you do? You type placeholder. Why are you going to do the same thing? Enter your email. Enter your email. Now, note something between this and the other one, okay? Note something between this enter your email and this enter your email. You know that this one is faded, right? This one is faded, but this one is bold. Now, on this one, see what will happen. If I type, it continue from there. You can, so that means you have to clean up everything here and then type your email. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the between placeholder and value. Here, we use value. But here we are using placeholder. So let's watch our placeholder. See our placeholder. Click on it. Email what happened? It's start from number one. Enter your email. And I can easily enter my email without cleaning out anything. Did you see? Are you is it making sense? Is it working at all? Of course, it's working. So let's continue. Practice, practice, practice is coding. Okay. So we I've shown you four things: placeholder and value. But you notice one thing again. If, for example, I'm going to my email address. Apart from the saying enter your email, so not even write enter your email, but at the side, at this side, at this side, they will put that's when you see enter your email. Then you now enter it inside the box. The box will be empty, but the box will contain something like placeholder like this. So how do you achieve that? Once somebody comes, you see that enter your first, you see first name first, then the box that follow it, and then we type. What I'm trying to say, let me uh, let's go practical. We are spending using practical terms, okay? So now to achieve that, there's what you call label. That's what we call what label. When you use label, that is how you achieve that. So without wasting, let me type label so you see it. Label. This is label. Label. Okay. This is label. And this formula for label. Label for you put equals to. You now put what you want to type. So label for what now? Let's see. You use the same thing. Enter your email. Label for email. Label for email. Now note one thing. Before we put, remember I told you something about HTML that HTML. The respect of nobody. The way you put it, the way you give it to you, garbage in, garbage out. So since it's label, if you put it here, it will go under. But it's supposed to be up. 
So what do you do? Come on top of input, okay? And let's start on top of input. This level on top of input, okay? Hope you are getting it. I believe you are getting it. Top of input, you want to put the label, okay? So label for what? Email. So email. Then in between the two, you type email, okay? Enter your email. Enter your email. Enter your email. And as usual, let's save our work and see what will happen. Let me make it both so you can see it. You see it? You now come over here, enter your email. And the person from the canal is know that and enter his email here. Are you getting it? Is it making sense? So you, once you put this, you don't need to put this one again. So you can, for you to remove this, just go to where you write value and delete the value. And here will be empty like this for you to put. I don't want to, uh, you can do that in your own assignment. So I mean, do it, show me what you did or ask me a question if you're able to get, but I believe you can get it. Now I notice something. Everything we are doing is on a straight line. Why? When you go to email address, for example, like Google, you want to enter your email address in Google, what happened in Google? You notice that your email address is up, the next line should be your password, right? So why is that not working like that? If you've forgotten my class, don't forget to please go back to that class where I teach you basic syntax in HTML. And that's why I teach you inline element and block element. I use div and span to explain it. You can only go back there, learn div and span once again, and know why it is like this is a span, it's not div. This is an uh, inline element, it's not a block element. So how do we make it, how do we combine it to become a block element? So what's happening, let's show you how you can do that. And if you've forgotten also how you can do that, I've taught you already, but if you've forgotten it, go back to my class and talk about header. Under heading, you can actually do that, okay? So, but since we, are, we need it here, let's do it here together. So what we do is just bring it down, what to call break, PR, use break. Now you use break, if you break all these things for us, and everything will go to the next level, okay? Yeah, break. Don't forget that. So let's save our work and see how it goes. Now let me make it both so you can see it. Now everything is taking shape, right? Enter your emails on its own, enter your password, enter your email. Remember, I just repeated because this one will use placeholder, okay? So I believe you've learned this. We are progressing. So let's continue to make progress as we are going on this. So like I said earlier on, there are many things you can do with input. Let's not continue to that things. They can also put ID here, but I don't want us to go into ID matter because you put ID there. That was when we enter CSS proper. I will teach you about that. I wanted to use style and color. We go to CSS. That now you can use ID and do your work well. So apart from the, your email, you can also enter date. You can also input date. You can also input date. Let's, let me just show you a picture. I'm just trying to do some of them that you can do there. You put date. Also input it like date of birth, your date, everything date. Then placeholder as usual will be date. And contrast to save. Then you remember to bring your work down. We want it to be neat. Since you already know BR, use your BR to bring it down. Then after you can also enter file. For example, somebody came to your or somebody wants to submit his CV or wants to submit his original certificate or anything certificate or you want him to bring you can actually enter file so file we enable the person to be able to upload okay and place order please upload your file here please place order please you don't even need to put this no need of putting place order there the person you understand that is there for him to upload this file unless you can use Level to third person to put his file there, okay? So, apart from file, there's also what we call range. You can actually do range. And I want to teach you on that range. I want to explain something on range. You can actually do range. Input. Range. Address for save. So, let me explain this too, so I won't be rushing everything. So you see it here. Yeah, it says you should put date. You remember I told you I can type put date. So to put date, first we just come over here, click on the date, put the date. I mean date. You want to enter your date of birth. Enter what you can enter. You put it there. Put the date. Or maybe date that you obtain the certification. 
or the date it I graduated from school, or the date of submitting this CV, anything. You know, you know what to do. You know how to tell the person to enter it. Once you enter it, you come over here, you enter it, you will see it straight away. Then choose file. Person can also choose file. If you click here, you see it, you choose a file, your certificate, your certificate, or anything I want person to choose. You choose it and upload it, and it will go straight away. Okay? Then range for you to know the range of one to two, three to four, you know, the person can put if this is the range, you can put a range. So there are many, many things you can do with input. If you and remember input work with forms, and I already teach you a tutorial I did on forms. If you've that tutorial, please go over it again and you will learn about that form. And don't forget, just you I enter this, you can also enter color, you can enter date, time, local, you can enter your email, you've done email, you've done file, you can enter hidden, you can enter month, you can enter number, you can enter done password, you can enter radio and range. Let me just take you radio and range. The last one, then I will not take you to advanced input, advanced HTML input. So in advanced HTML input, we will work on a project. In that project, I will explain input very well for you. I'm going to work on a project contact form. I want to create a contact form. Well, let me call it a registration form, like school portal. What somebody can come and register his name, his address, his matric number, his university. Just complete registration form application form it will be complete it will be contact form will be complete so that will be the one we learn next after this but meanwhile i said i want to teach you the last one so i can practice the rest practice all these ones by yourself okay but well, let me teach you range and radio that's why i want to show you range and radio so i won't get confused when you get there so let's go to radio button as usual put your input put your input this one around what are we going to enter? I'm bringing it for you. you can see it. We are going to enter radio. Next one, we enter range. Okay. Enter radio. The next one, we enter. We enter range. So put it radio. I want to do it twice. There's a reason why I want it to be twice. Input radio. Then also do range twice. Input. Just the way I did that twice, make sure you also do it twice. The range, do it twice as well, because I want to explain something using this. Okay. Radio buttons, what we want to talk about. Radio button, we want to talk about range. So you get something there. There's one that you can easily check. There's the other one you cannot easily check. That's what I want us. To do it together right away. Range. Try it again. Input. Range. Save. And let's go over it and see what we did. So you see our range. You see our radio button. Now you click this twice and it appears. Why you are using range to for example now? If I just want you to tick, what is your if you're if you finish your graduation so and so day, tick yes. If so, tick no. So with radio. You can actually tick and tick, 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 tick everything that the person is doing. But there's something you do now, this tick will not work again. If you immediately to put the name, like button, name, button, name, button, and you tick it again, it won't work. Now, when I advance one, I will teach you that. You see what I'm talking about. Just get all these things now. Then, apart from why the range is to tell you maybe from range 1 to 20, 1 to 15, you put the range, you tick. Put the range, you tick. So, are you getting the sense of it? There's also what you call test area. Test area will enable the person to type a lot of things. For example, look at test area. Let me make it bold. In test area, you can expand it. Remember, if I want this to come down, you know what to do to bring it down a bit. You can expand, then type. For example, if the person is feeling a phone, you can tell to introduce yourself or tell me why I should employ you or anything you ask the person. You give me a form, a paragraph. You're going to write notes. Maybe it's application or anything. So write it, can write it and submit it together. And that brings us to submit button. After everything, you can also submit your work. 
submit or register or anything you call it okay so submit is same thing as register so you can use register you can use submit so here you type submit submit don't worry about the spelling even if it's wrong you know what i'm talking about yeah and control s let's go over it and see it you see first we now submit you will know it's for me so what do we do here remember what we said you use your placeholder or you use your label at the same time placeholder so i first see submit here i think let me use label first right it's better for work to be neat we use label if you've forgotten label listen to it see get it again submit and you can call it submit you can call it register you are still saying the same thing you didn't you didn't commit any offense then control s or save let me make it bold so after having everything i see submit you get it mm. so uh, this is just introduction to input in our next class i'm going to teach you the advanced level html using input only input in advanced level i'll show you how you, we are going to work on a project the first is that we want to prepare a contact form or you can call it a registration form for for student you might use workout my use where anything at all so to be complete enter your first name your last name your this your phone number your this your this just we create complete contact form so hoping you've learned something here thank you once again for listening to cb encoding academy and see you in our next class where i'm going to take you on what we just said now thank you bye bye Okay.